All right, all right. So I'm gonna do a little role playing for y'all. Okay, I'm gonna talk about a case here. Okay, so in this plane, I'm gonna call myself Art Buckwald. Nice to meet you, I'm Art Buckwald. I'm actually a screenwriter and I'm a fucking genius. How about y'all? You ain't no Art Buckwald, all right? But you have to play a little role here, all right? Y'all are a bunch of studio executives at Paramount Studios, okay? So I have an idea for y'all, y'all ready? It's fucking genius, it's crazy genius. But before I share it with you, I need you to sign these non-compete agreement, non-disclosure agreement, basically saying that, you know, um, you ain't gonna bite my idea, you ain't gonna, you ain't, you, no, you're not gonna do the, you're not gonna, you know, take me for a ride here, right? You're not gonna make a competing film um, before I give you my idea. And y'all sign it, y'all agree, okay? All right. So, you ready for this? I have an idea for y'all. Y'all ready? About an African prince, right? Who's like kind of narcissistic and smug and kind of an ass who comes to the United States to find love, happiness, and learn a little bit about himself. This is a great movie idea. And guess what? Paramount, this is brilliant. This is the brilliant part. Since y'all have Eddie Murphy, who is like the biggest comedian of the 80s, like he's the dude, under contract for several years, it's going to star him. What do y'all think? And y'all love the idea. You're like, this is brilliant. Her buck wall. And I'm like, yeah. So I go home, I'm a typewriter. I'm a pa 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 so rejected, I go to my whiskey cabinet, but I hit back the typewriter, and then I hit up Warner, 1986, and Warner Brothers is like, all right, they signed the whole agreement thing, non, non-compete, non-disclosure, and um, I'm bam, bam, on my typewriter, right? Because like typewriters are loud, and and not a lot of a lot of people had computers in the early 80s to to type on, and uh, I get a call, ring, ring on my rotary phone. Art Buckwald speaking. Art, this is uh, blah, 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 blah at Warner. Um, We're bailing on your idea. And I pitched the same idea. I was like, yo, here's a story about an African prince who's kind of smug and narcissistic who comes to the United States to find love, happiness, and learn a little bit about himself. Not starring Eddie Murphy because you're Warner, but we could get someone else that that could fulfill this role. And again, I'm dejected. And I'm like, yo, what the hell? Like, why y'all gotta play me like this? I'm Art Buckwall. And Warner's like, well, uh, we found out that Paramount is making a film based on this idea of an African prince who's smug and narcissistic who comes to the United States to find love, happiness, and learn a little bit about himself. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm a ghost. I'm getting my loss aversion on. I'm going to go thermonuclear on Paramount. And I find out that John frickin' Landis and Eddie Murphy are writing this movie together. And it would come out in 1988, and it's called Coming to America. If y'all haven't seen it, yo, go watch that. I don't know if it's on the Netflix or on the Pirate Bay or whatever. They play it like 90 million times around the holidays. Uh, y'all need to check it out. Anyways, it's a classic. Now, here's the deal. I sued the shit out of Paramount. Now, the question was, what did I sue them for? Could I sue them for copyright infringement? And the answer is, hell no, because this is an idea. A movie about an African prince who's smug and narcissistic who comes to the United States to find love, happiness, and learn a little bit about himself, even starring Eddie Murphy. That's just an idea. Anybody could make that movie. It's all of the creative embellishments that are copyrightable. The fact that he goes to a Knicks game, um, you know, the Jerry Curl Juice, the Soul, what is it, Soul Soul Glow or whatever it's called, Uh, uh, him working at McDowell's, you know, all those are the creative expressions of the ideas. So, how did I win in court? It was under contract law. 
basically, when I had Paramount sign the non-compete, non-disclosure non agreements, right, I held them by law accountable that they would not make a competing film or product and they violated that contract. Therefore, I sued them. Therefore, I got a bunch of money and I, got, I get paid residuals and all that stuff for that film. Thank you very much for writing my stuff, Eddie Murphy and John Landis and executives over at Paramount. I could have probably made a better movie, but in fact, you know what, y'all made a classic, so I'm cool with that. Anyways, you made it through week, well, week one and a half. <laughs> So you're halfway through week two. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more the next class about like how did we get to this point in copyright history? How did corporations become authors? I know you're really intrigued. Uh, how, how, did, uh, you know, how did we get to life plus 70 years? I don't even get that. We're gonna talk about all that stuff next week and I, or the next class and I know you're super excited. I always wanna say days of the week but it doesn't even matter. I don't even know, I mean, this is basically how I am right now. Like every day is whatever the fuck day. Like, I don't even know like what day it is. Is it Tuesday? George, tell me. George is the dude who owned the property before. And I think his ghost is in here chilling with me. Um, you may catch a, a little EVP, a little extra electronic voice phenomena on the tape or maybe a little, a little orb or something. Um, that's George, old boy. But anyways, uh, do, do keep it locked. We'll be back uh, for day four where we talk about the history of copyright, how we got to this this place um, and I know you're super into it um, anyways uh, have a great a great one take care of yourself wash your hands you know what I'm saying um, you know uh, good luck and uh, peace <laughs>